Today I'm going to be doing a transmission service on a 2017 Toyota Sienna. This procedure is the same for all 2016 through 2021 Toyota Siennas. So I'm going to get right into it and show you the tools that you'll need. First off, we've got a drain pan because I'm doing it on a lift. I've got a tall one. Any drain pan will do. Obviously, if you're not on a lift, you won't need a tall one like that. Uh, next, I've got an impact. You don't need an impact, but you need something to take the wheel off. We're going to need to take the wheel off to get access to the fill plug. And then I've got a torque wrench to torque the lug nuts down when I'm reinstalling the wheel. I've got a 3 8 torque wrench. This would be another duplicate thing where because I've got a, both a 3 8 and a half drive, I grab them both, but you can get by with one and just get the appropriate sockets for those drives if need be. I've got another half inch ratchet here with a 24 millimeter socket. And then I've got a breaker bar don't need a breaker bar, makes it a little easier, with a 10 millimeter hex bit on it. And then I also have a six millimeter hex bit that we do not need to actually put a wrench on. I've also got a scanner. This particular scanner gives me access to transmission temperature. That's one of the parameters we need to view to officially set it at the correct level. I get a lot of questions, so please don't be one of them asking me how can I do it the wrong way? That's literally what people are asking is how can I do it without a scanner, without knowing what the temperature is? That's on you. I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way. If you wanna guesstimate what the transmission temperature is, use an infrared temp gun or anything like that, have at it. But uh, this is the only way I service them is by the book and to the correct temperature. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you. I also have a hand pump that I will be using to pump the new fluid into the transmission. And also I should note that I'm gonna put links in the description. I am an Amazon affiliate. So uh, if you do click on the links, I'll get a small commission on the purchase. I'm mostly doing it for your convenience. I've found the best price on Amazon for the fluid. So I will link that in the description. I will link the pump in the description. I will even link the scanner in the description. So um, anyways, that's kind of a rundown on this. Now I am gonna talk about the fluid for a minute. Uh, we need three and a half quarts of fluid. So I've got a one gallon, four quart jug here, and I've got the Valvoline Max Life. I don't work for Val Valvoline, I'm not pushing this fluid. I also always get lots of uh, comments from people telling me I'm using the wrong fluid, I'm gonna ruin the transmission. If you look on the back, this meets the Toyota WS standard. That's what Toyota is specking out in this thing, and the Valvoline meets that standard. I will also link genuine Toyota fluid if you feel more comfortable using that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using that. I just always have this on hand and I've never had a single problem with it. It is a great fluid, so that's what I run. There's three things when it comes to transmission fluid. There is the brand, which in this case is Valvoline. There's the manufacturer, which in this case is also Valvoline. And then there's the type, which in this case meets the WS standard. That's the type we need for this. And of all those three things, the critical one is just that it meets the right spec. It's the right type of fluid. Beyond that, what the brand is, what the logo is on the front and who makes it, they might not even be the same. The Toyota fluid, I am certain, is not made by Toyota. Somebody else is making it. Who knows? Maybe it's Valvoline. I don't know that. But the point is, the manufacturer and the brand aren't even the same, but neither one of them is critical. It's the right type that's the critical thing. So. That's my, my deal on that, because I know I'll get lots of comments on that. That's what we're using in this thing. So we're gonna get rolling here. I'm gonna lift this thing up in the air, get the wheel off, and show you what you need to do. One other tool I forgot to mention, I've got a small impact here with a 10 millimeter socket on it. There again, you don't need a power tool, but we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to get the panel off behind the wheel. Before we do anything else, we need to get the fill plug cracked open so that we know that's not gonna be a problem later. So we're gonna start by taking the wheel off. The next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove this panel. Another tool I forgot to mention is a pick. You really don't even need a pick, but they're the handiest for this. So we've got these two plastic fasteners right here, and if we just simply push in on them. You can see that recessed a little bit. Took a little bit firmer push than I was anticipating, but we got those both pushed in. We'll zip this 10 millimeter fastener out. 
and then we should be able to pull this right out. Now we've got access to our fill plug. My tool list is already changing. Generally, there's good enough access that you can put a ratchet and a socket right in there, but for some reason in this exact application, I can't. So I've now added a universal joint and a short extension to my setup, and that allows us to fit right in here and get right on that fill plug. So I'm just gonna crack it loose, which generally takes a bit of effort to break free, which this did, and then we can just easily do it by hand. So that's the important part. We can now move underneath. We don't even need to remove it. We can go underneath and drain the fluid. Now that we're underneath here, you can see that's the driver's side and this is the front of the vehicle. And right here is our drain plug. It's the only thing that resembles anything like a drain plug and it's got a 10 millimeter hex hole in it. So we can tuck our breaker bar in here in this case and we can give it a pretty abrupt push and break it free. Then we can roll our pan under here and we should be able to take it out the rest of the way by hand. And you can see this fluid is a little bit dark. It's definitely good to be doing it. This vehicle has 87,000 miles on it and they are not the original purchasers of it, but they do not believe that this service has been done before. As you can tell, this is not a very extreme stream draining out of here. And that's because we're not really draining it yet. There's still a fill level tube in here that needs to be removed. I know there's videos out there of people claiming to show you how to service these things and they're not removing this tube, they don't know what they're doing. They should not be servicing this transmission. This is nothing new. This is how a lot of Toyotas are. But I've got a six millimeter bit right here that we're gonna put up in here. This is of course a little bit messy, but we're gonna put it up in here. This tube is never tight, so you don't need a ratchet. And we're gonna unscrew this and then you'll see the flow really begin here. And I'm just gonna try and catch it so that I don't drop it in the pan. This tube, as you can see, it was recessed. And so it's probably about two and a half inches higher. So basically what's happening is the fluid is just draining out through the top there. So we were gonna miss the bottom two and a half to three inches of transmission fluid. That's a lot of fluid. So it would not be a complete service without draining it. We are down to a very small stream. It's possible that I could get another ounce if I let the thing sit for another 15 minutes, but we're not gonna be that worried about getting that last maybe ounce out of here. So we're gonna reinstall the fill level tube. My hand's still messy. I haven't even moved my hand from here because it's just going right back in. So we're gonna slide that back in and then we're gonna tighten it back down again by hand. We're not gonna put any tools on this. There is no torque spec. Just not tight is the, is the torque spec. As soon as you feel it bottom out, you're done and you can take the bit out. Now we're gonna grab the drain plug and crush washer and we're gonna wipe everything off and inspect the crush washer. If I see any issues with the crush washer, I'll replace it nine times out of 10. That's not necessary. So we can start threading this back in We're not gonna to torque it down yet, but we are gonna snug it down just a little bit with our wrench here. Now we're gonna start filling this transmission up again. So we're gonna start by just taking this fill plug out the rest of the way. And there is a crush washer on this as well, so we'll make sure we grab that. Now I'm gonna grab the hand pump and put our output end into the transmission. And I do have the pan underneath the fill plug here because sometimes you do dribble a little bit out and so we're gonna try and prevent making a mess here. And then I'm gonna start pumping the fluid in and I'm gonna pump almost the full gallon. I'm gonna pump about three and a half quarts back into the transmission. Now that I've got the pump set up, I've got the drain pan underneath just in case I spill any out of there 
usually if you are careful with this, that won't be a problem, but it's easier to prevent a mess than to clean up a mess. And then I've got the other end in the gallon of fluid, so I'm going to start pumping it in. All right, we've got three and a half quarts in. I'm going to take out the fill tube. I'm going to clean off the fill plug and the crush washer, inspect the crush washer and make sure it looks okay. In this case it does. And I'm going to reinstall it. There is a flaw to this and that's that I've got a U-joint in here and that will change the torque spec. I will not be delivering the full torque that the wrench is saying it's delivering but this is how we're gonna do it because there's not really another choice. So I've got my torque wrench set to 29 foot-pounds and we'll torque it down. We're going to reinstall the panel and these little clips need to be reset. So we're gonna push this center part out until they're sticking back out a little ways. Well, we just dropped one, but that's all right. Push that in place there. We'll get that started there. And then we can press these in until they're flush. We can tighten down the bolt. Normally, you might throw the wheel on right away, but in this case, the next step I took was I started it up and I shifted through the gears. I shifted into reverse and into drive. That's something you need to do before you set the level. The reason I started it up is because I'm gonna have to wait a little while. I'm gonna have to let this warm up before I can set the level. So while it's warming up, I'll put the wheel on, but we wanna make sure that we hit that target temperature. So that's why I've got it running. I've got my scanner plugged in. So I'm gonna show you how to access the transmission temperature on this scanner. So grabbing this scanner, here's what pops up when we plug it in. No codes present, that's a good thing. We're gonna hit the menu button and we're gonna go to service check, hit enter. 2017 Toyota Sienna, that's correct. And there we go. There's our transmission fluid temperature and it's 71.4. We need to have it between 95 and 113 Fahrenheit, which is what this displays. That is also 35 to 45 degrees Celsius. I'm going to set this down and keep an eye on it and start reinstalling the wheel. I'm going to use my impact, but I'm barely going to tighten these down and we'll torque them once we set the vehicle down. We have now hit 95 degrees, so we're going to go underneath, pull the drain plug out and set the level. So back under here, we're going to use the breaker bar again to loosen that, which isn't particularly tight at the moment. And then when we remove this with the vehicle running, we're not gonna drain anything we don't want to. This is how you get it down to the correct level. We've slightly overfilled it. So now we'll drain it down to the correct level. And we wanna make sure that we don't lose the crush washer. I don't recommend the method of measuring what you take out to get it back to the correct level. I highly recommend doing this by the procedure because I've heard a lot of stories even in the comments on some of my videos of people who have found out their transmission fluid level was not correct even after a dealer service. So the only way to know that you've got it at the correct level is by performing the procedure as Toyota calls out for, which is this. It's slowed down to just a trickle, so I'm going to reinstall the drain plug.
I've got my torque wrench set to 15 foot-pounds. And we're going to torque it down. And you want to be careful because the exhaust right here is going to be quite hot at this point. Now that we've got the fluid level set, we're going to drop this down and torque down the lug nuts. The torque spec for the lug nuts is 76 foot-pounds. And of course you want to do it in a star pattern. This one is all done and ready to send down the road. Thanks for watching.